This is the man who put the A in ATR. It's Mitchell Gad. One number eight, night three. Number night three, touchline ramp. We are at Little Man Garage again. What are we talking about today? We are going to talk. Um, well, we're going to play a game to kick things off. Look at transfer speculation this week. Who has got the better we feel right now, Real Madrid or Juventus? Women's World Cup and the impact it's had. We've got a little Reader's Wives. We've got one guest, it's Rob. It's Rob from Little Man. Little Man Coffee, our live home in Cardiff. Next week, we've got another quiz there. Yes, there is a quiz. Uh, on Wednesday, with All Money Got a Mind charity. Should we play that? Yeah, yeah, play music. Go on, then, play it. <laughs> We're going to be playing a brand new game. We never start off with a new game. What is it? From Bean to Cup is the name of the game. I'm going to give you a name and you have to tell me, is that a brand of coffee bean? Or is it a football cup competition? Valhalla. Now, is that a football cup competition or a brand of coffee bean? What are you both thinking? Rob, do you want to go first on this? <laughs> I, I think that um, I think that's a, a cup competition. You think it's a cup competition? Oh, I think that's a cup competition. It's a coffee bean. It's a coffee bean, a Valhalla coffee bean. It's made by the Death Wish Coffee Company. It's described as being forged from the vo volcanic soils of Indonesia and nutrient-rich soils of Central and South America. Its full name is the Valhalla Java Odin Force Blend. That's a cracker. That's a cracker, <laughs> that is. And that's from you. Death Wish. Uh, Death Wish Coffee Company. Kanga. I'm going to say bean. Bean. I'm, I'm going to go cup, just to be different. Okay. Mm. Rob takes a 1-0 lead because it is a cup. It's the largest, how dare you not know this, it's the largest international youth football tournament in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Chavero, or sh sorry, I've mispronounced mis 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 that. Java Pro. I'm assuming Java Pro, maybe? J-A-V-A? -A. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that that's a coffee. That's a coffee, he's gone B. Are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Do you know what I'm gonna do? You're gonna match him and play it safe? I'm saying that's a bean. It is a bean. It is a bean. Uh, Java Pro is a coffee and protein mixed drink. Write these down. Question. I might leave that on the shelf. Okay, so you've both got a point for that. Libertadores. Cup. Is that a bean or a cup? It's a cup. I, I'm going to say bean. Oh, it's a cup. <sighs> It's the Libertadores de America, is the premier annual international club, club football competition in South Africa. La Vaza. Is that a bean or a cup? I'm at liberty to say that is a bean. Okay, I, I, have, I have seen it written on the side of a, a cup, but yeah. it is, I think, a coffee. Yeah, it is a coffee. It's an Italian espresso. It is, okay, yeah. so that's another. Do you rate that coffee? It's three all. I wouldn't. I, 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 I wouldn't be able to rate it. I think. Yeah. So. I don't think that's unfair. <laughs> that is not a question of the bat. official cup. Pretty good at what they do. Yeah. You know, it's, pretty successful. Okay. Is Svenska a cup or a bean? I'm saying that is a bean. A bean. I'm saying it's a cup. It is a cup. Oh, Rob takes <laughs> the lead. The Svenska Kupen is the main knockout competition in Sweden. Oh. Okay. Team Little Man, last one. We could have a draw here and it would be really anticlimactic. Right. <laughs> Number seven. Campos. Is Campos a bean or a cup? A cup. I'm saying it's a bean. Oh, it is a bean. Oh, oh it's going to end for all. <laughs> Campos. Yes. And it's, it's an Australian coffee brand. It's based in Sydney. Oh, there we are. Oh, Campos. Yeah, yeah they Campos. Do, they do really, it is really good coffee, that. Team ATR. Big up, big up Campos. So it's four all. Four all. Well then. That was, that was what do you mean? Did you like this? Be a, that's it. That's it. I have not got it's a, not a tiebreaker. Not a tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <four. Rocks laughs> <the stone. laughs> it is four all. Congratulations. I'm proud and delighted to introduce you today to... 
a touchline rant. Speculation. Spe 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 speculation. Spe 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 speculation. Tielemans, it looks like he's going to be back permanently for Leicester, yeah? They're going to break their transfer records to sign in for about 40 odd million. Leicester will definitely look. They've got a really good squad. Well. They, so it they depends on loads of factors, right? It depends, so it depends on good old Harry, Harry Maguire. Right, well, he's the next 100 one. Million he's Harry the next Maguire. one. Harry Maguire was this week, had two bids for him, Man City and Man United. Apparently, it's just speculation. It's Obviously, purely speculation. Purely speculation. Um, He'll go, though, right? I don't think, I don't see him being a Leicester player. What do you mean? I think they'll just say, just to make a point. I, is, I he think be I think, is he going to be a Leicester next season? Yeah, I, I think yes, point. because... I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think you'd go. Okay, I, th I, I think... I don't see how he can be a Leicester so, player. So I think Leicester will just sort of show their fox teeth and just say, no, we don't Snow actually need it. We're not a selling club to make a point because if he stays there, that benefits them. Understandably, it's a lot of money and obviously you'd be thinking, that's a commodity, I need to cash in on that for the greater good and we can replace it. So it depends on who can they I can Can I touch on your mascot comment then, yeah. briefly? If they're Leicester Tiger, uh, uh, Fox, not even a Tiger, that's the whole, yeah. Fox is snarling at them, saying, back off Harry Maguire, you, against Man City. Man City's mascots are two aliens. Do you know that? Yeah. Their mascots are two aliens. I don't know that. Man United is the devil. But Man United, now, we talked about it before, their transfer policy is one of, at the moment, they are going after young players. So they've brought in Wan Bazaka, yeah. who's very young, had a really good season last season at Palace, and they brought in. They brought in Daniel James, who's really promising at Swansea. Their transfer right. speculation, good really good runner, really quick. He is a very interesting young player. To make Harry Maguire, they basically go into Harry Maguire and they say, look, you're a bit older, so you're going to be our figurehead signing. Big head. Right? Yeah, he has got a big, big head. head. That's one hell of a figurehead. Oh, look, I want to go to Spain first. Can I go there? Because I've got some interesting news which has happened tonight. Um, Atletico Madrid. But they also signed uh, Hector Herrera today, the Brazilian midfielder. They've had a busy old day, Atletico, because they've signed Joe Felix um, from Benfica. 19 years old, had one of the hottest seasons going last season, like Jaden Sancho level good. Mm. And they're signing for 143 million euros, which means he becomes the fourth highest transfer fee of all time at 19. But that's not speculation, is it? No, so it we're still doing speculation. Um, links into speculation yeah. that Man City have paid the release fee um, for Rodri from Atletico, which is seven. That's what they've done. No, it's not that. It's speculation. 79 million they've had to pay to get Rodri out of his contract with Atletico. So the Atletico Madrid exodus continues. Gareth Bale. Where does he move? Does he stay at Real? No, I don't think he will. He's, it's an interesting Who's going to pay for Gareth Bale for that, that cost and that it's, price? Do you know apart who, from Real Madrid. Do you know who I reckon he's getting isn't going to pay that? Is again, bringing it back. I reckon they genuinely thought, oh, Man United will buy him. Don't worry. Because he's a big name player, he's commercially viable, which is all the balls of Man United care about. They yeah. don't care about football. He's they, sick, sick note though, isn't he? He is. This is but because but the board, all the board, Ed Woodward and the Glazers at United, all they care about is making money. But that's, I think that's enough I'll speculation do. for now. Can I read you the midfield of Juventus? Rabio, Ramsey. Pjanic, Bentenker, Emre Can, Blaise Matuidi and Sami Khedira. Yeah, I think you're Ramsey on a free transfer was one of the deals of the summer. Real Madrid have got a midfield of Toni Kroos, Luka Modric, Casemiro, Valverde, and then you've got like Brahim, Asensio, Isco, Danny Caballos. You've got Eden Hazard has come in yeah. as well. You've got, um, you've signed, any other players, they've also signed Mendy, they've signed well, you know, they've signed uh, Novich up front. Yeah, the Malito. The Melito is coming. They've done well, Real Madrid, but they meant business this summer. I think there's two they extremes can't. there. You've got the, the Juve do amazing business on, not a budget. No one does just better play. business than Juve. No one can do better. And then you've got the extreme of like Real just paying whatever it takes to get those players in. Forget, we now need to see how Juventus react to having Sarri as their coach. And Ronaldo's still in Juve as well. <laughs> I would prefer to watch Juve. Sorry, 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 ball. Martin O'Neill. 
shock. The dream is dead. Let's talk a bit of Nottingham Forest. Can I tell you why it failed? Forest. Because he did have John Robertson as his assistant. There is an argument about that. The John Robertson or Roy Keane. belonged to Martin O'Neill. <laughs> they just belong with each other. But it's. But is it because what? Martin O'Neill's just lost lost the plot. Lost, lost the, the dressing room. room. Lost the dressing lost room. The player power. So, when it comes to player power, do you actually? You've got to accept that is going to be a thing of his time. There's not many clubs which. You. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, not, many, not many managers are in control of everything now, as well as your handling egos and the modern day football. I no, just no managers in charge of it all. I just don't think you can uh, marshal that enough when it comes to player power, because they'll just find a way. If they if they want you out, they'll just find a way, which is ridiculous to say that. But you're looking at a, a, a world of influencers, high high profile people. Um, they have the best legal team they've got the best agents they've always got options they realize okay well if i'm a commodity as a player then i've got i, I need power myself when it comes to egos if they're doing well and everything's going going smoothly that's the key that to this it. argument here when things are going well but and that's the it. problem but this is, is the real is world and they're, they're, they're in it for their career they're in it for the best possible price okay look if, man, if man city players are acting that way then a part of me will say okay fine i agree man city players probably they deserve a lot, that those players. So there's probably players at that club now saying, I want to earn more because I deserve it. Whereas when Nottingham Forest players start doing that, I'm like, boys, earn it first. I would struggle to keep you the midfield currently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like, boy, earn it first. Do you know what I mean? But it's then it's like, well, okay. On that, that Nottingham Forest are option. not in a position, they mm, should, Nottingham not. Forest players should not be in a position to go to the owner and say, we don't like the manager, we want you to get rid of it. Because the owner should turn around and go, well, well, I'm really like you, you're playing a bit, you're playing awful at the minute. And then he signs Sammy Amiobi, which I think signed oh, his death for him. What's wrong with that? He is. <laughs> saying, so I've got a friend who's a Newcastle fan, and uh, I just, you know, there's been this backstory to Sammy Amiobi. <laughs> Sammy Amiobi is, I would argue, one of the worst signings of the summer. He wouldn't be out of place in Swindon. No, he's awful. He's so. Well, if he has a great season now, he's te- well. That's if he has fine. a great season, Look, that is the risk that we are sitting here willing yeah. to take. I, what would I'd love him to? I'd love him to prove me wrong. <laughs> we just get in the playoffs. Do you know what I mean? If you got in the playoffs, that would be huge for a club like Forest. So, but look, Roy Keane as well. Roy Keane left to further his own managerial will career. He, will Roy Keane ever be successful at the club? Will Roy Keane ever be happy? <laughs> but no, but no, that's why I like Roy King, because he, he signifies the human condition of just being that I way. Know, but He's you such can't. an existentialist, you nihilist way. You hate everything as much as Roy King But he does, everything. and, he, and you know where you stand with him. You know yeah, what he's going to yeah, think. It's and that all, all the, yeah, it's consistent opinions on players, and like that story of him saying, I find it insulting if I hear stories about people waxing lyrical about me. When it should be about that shirt, it should be about that. Yeah, that, so we've that got clip from Roy Keane where he says <coughs> they read him. Yeah, yeah they, when they read him the job. quote. Yeah. For those who I may like not it. have seen it, it was a quote that Sir Alex Ferguson said about Roy Keane after the Juventus semi-final and in then they interviewed Roy Keane. When Roy Keane got yellow carded, then he knew that he would miss the final. If Man United won, they'd miss the final. And Ferguson said he'd never pulled out of a tackle, so he knew he wouldn't play the final. But he never pulled out of a tackle. He made every killer pass he scored he was like Roy Keane did everything to make sure that even though I can't get there I'm going to make sure the rest of you lot get there and Roy Keane said to be honest I find stuff like that insulting because I was doing my job yeah and it's so you know, I find comments like that insulting because it's almost as if they're not expecting me to do my job so we're in a transition right now where it's going from old school to, to like a new modern way where you've got Instagram stars and you've got influence and there's more business and there's more side businesses and there's more as a tendency of power for those players. Yeah. I just think, unfortunately, football has moved into that sphere because of the amount of money oh, it has. To play. The Neymar transfer, I know we've said about it already, but the Neymar transfer shows. So you're also how buying, much you're buying a brand doing that, right? Yeah, because Neymar, the Neymar transfer was interesting in that every player who plays in Spain has to have a buyout clause in his contract, legally. There's freedom of movement. And Name they all the high earners like Messi's is set at a really stupidly high level like it's I, th- I think it's like something like nine hundred million if not more so you can buy Lionel Messi but you'd have to have a lot of money to be able to afford him and no one can they thought that was going to be the case at Barcelona 
they with Neymar, they were like, well, no, we'll set Neymar's transfer uh, transfer figure like two hundred and fifty million. No one's ever going to pay two hundred and fifty million for a player. He bought himself out of his contract for two hundred and fifty million, and then signed for PSG. So yeah, that's that's he what bought we're himself. At. He, so it, and he's he, the first of his kind to do that at yeah, that young age. Is, yeah, he bought at any age. He bought himself out of his contract. He went, I will pay my own release fee and sign to PSG on a free transfer. Is essentially what it is. And now he's going that as PSG because it, you know, PSG were like, well, yeah, we gave him the money to do it. So th that's the levels. How far can we push? That's player this power system? gone. Ma a player so bought himself out of his contract. Can you actually get back to that? Manner. You can't get back to that. So you have to find a way, a, a creative way, in order to get through to those players and organise. Problem that, is that team. Problem is again, we'll bring it back to. We are talking about players like Pantillamon and not the Forest. We're not talking Neymar. Neymar is a, a should have player power because he's a great player. There's some of that Forest squad. Sammy Amiobi shouldn't have any player power. <laughs> he doesn't deserve yeah, any. He's got any GCSEs. He doesn't deserve it. The, someone who like Graben. Graben had a good, is playing quite well for Forest. He's done all right. He's done better for Forest than he did Sunderland, you know, when they got relegated. Like that. But he but left he actually halfway through that loan. Yeah, he fought as much as he could there and stuff. But Graben's a decent player. But again, I don't think he should have enough power to go into the owner and say, I want the manager sacked. And the owner goes, OK. OK, who do you prefer to play for then, gents? Neil Warnock or Pep Guardiola? Ah, uh, OK. <laughs> uh, personally? <laughs> War Warnock. Warnock? I would. I like fishing. I reckon, <laughs> I reckon, yeah, I reckon if I played for Neil Warnock, I'd feel like I was an internal, an integral cog to a football club, because I think Neil Warnock would make you feel like a million pounds. I think he'd be a great motivator for you. you I am Pep Guardiola, you'd constantly be on edge. It's being like, oh, is he going to sell me? Is he going to, oh my God, there's so much pressure. The pressure of being a player at Man City must be huge. So I'm going to say Warnock too, because I reckon the atmosphere at Cardiff's brilliant. <laughs> I reckon they have a right laugh. <laughs> I do, I do pet. You go pet. Just because it's more of a psychological way yeah, of you. Being. No, it'll be warfare for you. You'll yeah. be ending in a transfer request after six months. Pet. <laughs> right, we'll leave it on that. Hey, it's Mitchell Gard here, and if I'm not on ATR, I'm listening to ATR. So have a think about that. Readers' wives is a question and answer segment that we do, which is I ask someone a question, they answer, it. and they answer yeah. it. That's what they do. What was the That's question they do? Um, I'm trying to find it now because I've completely forgotten. Can we put right. a question to Rob Kay. before we go into it? Question of the week. Yep. So this is, we'll give you a question. We'll, I'll give you the question at the front, start. I'll read you what other people have come up with and then you give us our, yours at the end. So you've got a little bit of time to think about it, yeah? Our question was, if you could rename a football club, which one would you rename and what would you call them? We had some pretty good responses in this. I quite liked uh, first one was from Nathan, a uh, long-time listener. He said, turn United from Manchester United to Barcelona. No explanation needed. <laughs> <laughs> Which I felt was, it was it's good. very good. I enjoyed that one. Uh, shout out. Please. Shout Get out. out. Uh, did he shout check the glazers in it? No. no. He, I think, yeah, he didn't even use hashtag glazers out. Yeah. Um, the Gormisaurus, the official mascot of the pre of the uh, of a touchline rant, at Peter and more. He said, "Aren't Tottenham already renamed Spursy, or did I dream it? Change West Ham to UK Public United, Newcastle to New London United, and Arsenal to AFC Savings Holdings," <laughs> which I thought was very good. I did enjoy that. Uh, CSKA Sophia Gardens. Uh, our sponsor. Keep, we're keep, sponsor keep them. interest. We're, 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 yeah, yeah, we're not announcing yeah. anything yet. Potentially confidential. So we're yeah. Keep an eye on CSKA Sophia Gardens and the touchline run over the next few weeks is what I'll say. Surely Newcastle need to rename their club to Self Harm United. <laughs> Inexplicable decision making going on up there. And. Jordan Lloyd came in and said, just rename Chelsea to Frank Lampard's Chelsea. So huge. <laughs> Outro. What have we learned this week? What's the biggest takeaway from this week? Thinking about the modern transition from old school football and seeing yeah, it's if, an there's interesting. Space, if there's a space between them. Flat Earth United will end on. An owner of a team. Alpine has renamed yeah. their squad Flat Earth United. 
We are here living. to unite the voices of millions of flatters, movement followers, and all who are looking for answers. Man marking the hot issue. At the quiz. Oh yeah, there's a quiz. Little man coffee. <laughs> there's so a quiz and little man coffee. We're so awful at promotion. In town. Go we haven't mentioned it. Next week, little man yes, coffee. Yes, there's a quiz. Cardiff, there's a quiz. Come down, hang out. Also, yeah, so there's that. And also, uh, Heavy Metal Pod, big ups, appreciate them. and Give them a follow. Check out our 92 episode. Uh, what we did last week bit different wasn't it to this week last week's yeah, very yeah. different but yeah we're, we doing, a, we're doing a quiz we're doing a quiz we're doing a quiz it's, it's really, really good thing. it's right. custom it's Come a customised quiz next time it's for mine charity next time you see us we'll be at Little Man Coffee forgot about the quiz forgot about the quiz yeah. yeah hi I'm Mitchell Gann whether I'm in the UK Australia Canada Costa Rica Timbuktu I listen to Winnish. I listen to a touchline run, that's ATR, yeah.